All right, here we go. I had this particle board laying around, so I decided to make a template with this. I made it about 42 inches tall, 18 inches wide, and then I used a nine inch radius circle to get that arch at the top. This next part is definitely not necessary, but I wanted a line so I could drill some holes evenly spaced and equal distance around the border. So I made this makeshift compass out of a piece of scrap plywood. It's the same compass I used to make that initial circle to cut this jig out. And I just used it to draw a line all the way around. What I'm doing is making a jig for the metal to form around. These holes are going to allow me to use some clamps to hold the steel in place around the jig so it holds its shape. I found some 1 inch by 8 inch angle iron and that's what I'm going to use to make the legs and the arch of the mailbox. So here I got an 8 foot chunk. I found the center at 4 feet. And then I marked every inch, and I marked 15 uh, inches going to the left, and then 15 inches going to the right. I'm using my metal chop saw to cut these little curves in the angle iron. You'll see in one of the next upcoming shots that these curves will allow me to bend this metal around the jig. Before I do that, I'm going to use my angle grinder and clean up all the burrs left by these cuts so it's nice and smooth. Doing this by myself was a little awkward, but basically I found the middle of the angle iron and lined it up with the middle of my jig. I grabbed the two ends, the left and right ends, and bent it around the arch and then used a clamp to hold it in place. I ended up cutting this jig a little shorter and that is to accommodate a little cross brace and cutting the jig shorter allows me to put that brace right on the edge making sure it's nice and square with the rest of the frame and then you just have to weld this in place once i had that bottom cross brace welded into place i went around the arch and tack welded all those little curves that way the uh, metal frame will now hold its shape I should mention that I'm mostly a woodworker and I am far, far, far from being a metal worker or a good welder at all. I have a really cheap Harbor Freight flux core welder. Um, it's not going to do any serious welding, but for this, it's totally fine. The welds are pretty ugly, but that steel's not going anywhere. And after a little bit of grinding, you'll never know. I'm doing the grinding with a little 20 volt battery operated angle grinder. I bought an adapter so my DeWalt batteries would work with it. This is a Harbor Freight brand Bauer. It does the job, not something I would use if I was grinding all day, but um, a few battery changes and it, and it did okay. I used this quarter inch cutoff wheel and a little flap disc to do most of the grinding and get it nice and smooth. Once the frame is all welded up and grinded down, I wanted to cut the legs so they were the same length on both sides. I chose six inches just because I thought that would look good. Once those legs were cut, I did it all over again so I'd have two of them. Using that jig, they both ended up exactly the same. One thing I didn't film because it was getting late was welding on two more pieces of angle iron to connect the two sides together. I bought and got this sheet metal cut at this metal factory. I don't really know how thick it is, but I basically told them I want it thick enough to be strong, but thin enough to be easily bent, and this is what they gave me. This is where that jig comes in really handy. I use that jig to trace out the exact size I need for the side panels. I initially started cutting it with some metal shears, but I was getting some weird creases and it was just kind of tough to do, so um, I put a thin cutoff disc in my angle iron and cut it that way. I got the first side panel to fit perfectly, held it up with some spring clamps, 
drilled some eighth inch holes and I'm using rivets to hold it in place. I'm using a Craftsman rivet gun and I bought this big package of rivets from Menards. I want to say the whole thing was probably like 30 or 40 bucks. All right, I got one side completely done. You have to really make sure you clamp that sheet metal in tight to the angle iron while you're riveting it so everything is nice and tight. I just spaced these rivets evenly around the arch and down the frame, uh, spacing that I thought looked good. I got both panels in place. Everything is riveted nice and tight. I decided not to do any welding just to avoid welding galvanized steel. Here you can see me mocking up a little side brace. Later I decided not to go that route. The next step was getting the back panel in. I got it cut to the right length. I didn't record much of this and I probably should have, but it was getting late and I was getting tired and I just wanted to get this part done. It, you just have to bend it around the arch on the inside and again kind of clamp it to the angle iron and, and rivet it in place. On the front side I used another piece of angle iron flipped the other way to kind of act as like a rain catch and I riveted that steel angle iron right to the sheet metal. And here I'm just showing the inside all the rivets how everything fits nicely. The frame is starting to become really solid with all these rivets and steel in place. You can barely move it. This is where things started getting interesting. I have no plans. I'm just kind of winging this whole project, but I really didn't know how I was going to do this inside. I got some angle iron and created this little structure to hold the sheet metal for the inside panel part. I used the existing rivets um, from the frame, the arch, to hold it in place. And you can see I kind of did it at an angle, that way any rain or snow that would get in uh, would, would fall off to the front. Here I'm showing how I riveted that vertical piece to the frame as well. I, I didn't have to create any new holes or any new rivets for any of this inside structure. I used all existing uh, rivets from the frame. The next step will be welding on some pieces to connect the frame on the bottoms for the sheet metal to sit on. And I first thought I was going to be able to just use angle iron, but angle iron's at a 90 degree angle, and this had to be more than that since, since I put that pitch on for the, for the water to run off. So I had to get some flat bar steel, weld it to the front, and then weld it to the top, and kind of make my own angle iron that's not quite 90 degrees, or that's more than 90 degrees, I should say. And again, my welding is awful but after grinding it down, it looked pretty good. Once I got that front part done, then I had to do the same thing on the back side, but just in the opposite direction. And this will give me two planes uh, to attach some sheet metal to. The inside structure is pretty much done. I just have to add the steel and rivet it on. Okay, the next step was to get the sheet metal in place on this inside. This bottom one's pretty easy. You can kind of just bend it into place and it just sets right down. Um, rivets will hold it in place as well. This vertical piece was a little bit tougher. I needed a way to make sure rain wouldn't get from the inside, so I bent this little flap at the bottom and it'll sit on that bottom sheet of steel um, and, and let the rain divert away. The problem is when you put that flap on there, you can no longer bend it. So I had to cut a little chunk out of the middle to allow it to bend. Um, I was a little nervous about this because I thought you would see that crease, but once it was put in place and flat against it, you could see the cut mark still, but the little bend was gone. I will try to hide that little cut mark with a rivet and some body filler. All right, both of those pieces of steel are in place and riveted on. Everything's fitting really nice. There's a little bit of gap on the side here and that's because the side panels kind of bow in and out a little bit and I don't have them connected. So uh, what I'm gonna do is add a rivet 
you'll kind of see me here. You kind of push it in. I'll add a rivet here to kind of hold it in place. And then all of these joints will get cocked so it's watertight. After those two inside panels were put in place, I cut a little hole for this mail slot. These are something that you'd normally put on your front door. Uh, I, I found this at Menards for like $30. I just cut the hole and screwed it on. Here you can see I added those rivets to the outside. That way it kind of sucks that panel in. I also added some feet to the bottom. This is so if it gets put on concrete, I can bolt it to the concrete, or if it sets on the grass, uh, it won't just sink into the ground. It'll have a little bit more surface area. On the back of it, I added a little horizontal piece of flat bar steel to kind of brace everything. Cut a hole for this access panel that I found at Menard. It's made of metal and I just riveted it on. You actually have to open it with a flathead screwdriver, so it's not locked or anything, but if you are gonna steal the letters, you at least need to bring a screwdriver along. Got everything sanded, wire brushed, degreased, prepping for paint. The galvanized steel doesn't need protected from rust, but the angle iron does. So I got some of this rust stop spray, sprayed all the angle iron and exposed steel uh, to hopefully make this thing last a little longer. Here you can see the degreaser I used prior to this step. You basically spray this on, wipe it, and then you wipe it down with some water to clean it. That spray has dried. I used some body filler in the pink there on that little seam that I had to cut. And now I'm just setting it up and getting ready for primer. I'm lucky enough to have some spray equipment, so I sprayed this primer. I'll put a picture of it in the bottom corner here. I got it from Sherwin-Williams, and it's supposed to bond to steel and galvanized really well. You can also see the little hole I had to cut for that mail slot and the little screw holes. Okay, this is after I brought it inside. It was getting a little cold out in my shop and I painted the red in my basement and kind of set up a little paint booth down here. I used some red direct to metal paint. It's made for outdoors, right on metal, kind of used for like heavy equipment and stuff. So it should last a decent amount of time. It's, it's paint, so it'll still scratch, but um, hopefully it'll hold up okay. The front, that mail slot, I spray painted gold again with like a Rust-Oleum outdoor paint. I'll have to go back and get these screws painted gold as well. Once that paint was dried, I put it on its back. I found these letters. They're actually ornaments from Target. They're made of aluminum. I painted them gold and I epoxied them in place. You can see on the bottom, I haven't painted it yet. I'll have to get in with a brush and, and paint all these legs red, just a little bit more protection from rust. Once those letters were dried, I added some gold stars to the side. Same thing, I found them at Target, painted them gold and epoxied them on. I then went and painted every single rivet gold. I thought that would add a little bit more color so it's not so red. It's looking really good so far. It's pretty much completely done. There's a few spots I need to touch up. I wasn't careful painting these gold rivets, so I'll have to go back and fix some red spots. But for the most part, it's done. Every Christmas, I gift something to my small town. And this year, I'm gifting this Letters to Santa mailbox. It's placed downtown where all the kids can drop their letters off to Santa and potentially get a letter back. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Sorry about the horrible audio and production quality but i am new to posting on youtube and hopefully i'll get better as i continue thanks